Kyle, thank you so much for joining me, my man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Of course, dude. All right. As with everybody, we have a leaderboard, trivia questions right off the top. You got 60 seconds to answer as many as you can, and we'll see where you can get on our leaderboard. You ready? All right, let's go. All right. Who is your first career home run off of? Marco Gonzalez. Yes. Who is your first career hit against? Um, like, I know everything about him. I'm his hand. <laughs> first career strikeout against? Uh, Shields. Yes. James Shields. Uh, where did you bat in your major league debut in the lineup? Seven? Yeah. Uh, your jersey number in your MLB debut? Uh, three. Yes. Who did you bat behind in your debut? Carlos? No, Max Stassi. Where was your first away game in the big leagues? Uh, Seattle? Uh, Anaheim. Who were the two starting pitchers in your debut? Um, for us? Oh, I don't know. I know, they're, they're, theirs was Shields, uh, I don't know, Keiko? No, Morton. All right. That's it. Good. All right. All right. So the, the first career hit was Bruce Rondone. Yeah, that's Bruce right. Bruce Rondone. Who? 3-2 three, three, slider. I know that hits a first and it tips off his glove. <laughs> did you, did you crush I know, it? I know that. I, Bruce Rondone, when I, when I first saw this, I didn't even know, I guess it was like a short stint in, in, uh, with the White Sox, but that dude came on the scene throwing like, 110 miles an hour when he first came up. I was like, oh my God. Oh, oh yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, he, he was tough. I, I, was, I, was, I remember I was in a 3 2 count and he threw me a slider and I was like, kind of freaked <laughs> out and I hit it off the front. And then it tipped off his glove at first and went to right. So I was like, oh, thank God. Woo. <laughs> um, all right, Kyle. So, first, I want to, so we kind of have a similar uh, thing in that you, you have an older brother that is also pretty good at baseball. Um, so I wanted to ask you, because my brother's nine years older than me, and yours is, I believe, six, so definitely older. But I wanted to, to figure out the dynamic, because for me, it was almost like Justin's so much older than me that it was almost uh, like growing up, like I like looked up to him and wanted to be where he is. With you guys being a little bit closer, was there a lot of competition? Was there a lot of envy of where he was? Um, what was that dynamic like between the two of you growing up? Um, it, it was more so um, like you and Justin. Um, yeah, he's about six, seven years older than me, and I, w I would always want to, you know, kind of play at the level that he was playing at because, you know, it's my older brother. I wanted to play with him more often, and, you know, um, I think it was good for me because when I was younger, I would always watch him in high school and in college, pro ball, and I always wanted to play at that level and just play like at the level that they are, even though I was six years younger. So I think having him being older um, definitely helped me out. And, you know, I definitely looked up to him and tried to play, you know, just, just like him, even though I was at a younger age. Right. So, and so he ended up going to, to Florida. You committed there. Um, and then obviously got drafted fifth overall. What, what was that de decision like for you? Was it kind of, did you know immediately if I get drafted in, in the top, whatever, in the top 10 picks, I'm going to go? Or was it a tough decision for you whether to, to sign or to go to school? Um, I mean, you, you never know really how the, how the draft is going to work out because there's so many moving parts. Um, but, I mean, my, my family's pretty um, – pretty like school oriented you know my parents would always um like every time I came home like we we weren't allowed to play video games or at all during the week like we had to make sure we get our school work done and yeah. you know we had to you know have good grades in school so we could play um you know sports and that was kind of like their main goal growing up they, they were like if like they let us play sports and they let us have fun growing up and stuff but it was more school oriented and you know, just making sure that we were prepared for life, even though, you know, ba play, playing baseball is tough and not, not like, not a lot of guys make it to the MLB. So, you know, it's always good to have like a little backup plan, but, um, 
you know, it's not, it's not always easy just, you know, by bypassing college and, you know, going straight into a career from high school, but, you know, it's definitely, um, you know, I, ju- I definitely enjoyed this experience so far and I'm planning on playing a lot longer. So yeah. you know, I'm, ha- I'm happy with the decision I made. And, you know, it was a good one. I, I always wonder, cause you know, I, I ended up getting drafted out of college. So I, I get into pro ball at 21 years old. And, and for me, that jump from college, from D1 pitching to the pros is the biggest jump that I faced in my entire career, from a young kid to the end of my career. And I would always wonder, the, the guys that came out of high school, how you did it. Like, you're then going from high school pitching to, to professional pitching. So you're going from guys throwing 75 to guys throwing 100. And it's like, how, like, was there a big adjustment for you um, when you got to Pro Bowl uh, when, when, when it came to hitting? Yeah, it was definitely tough. I mean, you know, I was 18 year old, 18 years old coming out of high school and I'm playing with a lot of guys that, you know, went to whether it was Juco or three or four years uh, of college, you know, they're roughly four to six years older than me. Uh, you know, they've been away from home going to college or what, whatever. Um, so it's definitely weird just the fact that, you know, I'm not playing like in my age group, age range. <laughs> anymore and guys are a lot older and coming out of college so I always like kind of looked looked up to them and um even though we were on the same team we were we were were all boys and stuff and having fun but you know it's definitely a weird uh experience at first um just you're traveling all the time you're now playing over 100 games you know in high school we played like 20 to 30 games you know not I never played 130 games (laughs) in a row before um so it was definitely you know, life-changing experience, but, you know, it, it's been so much fun and I've made so many different friendships and connections throughout this game. It's, it's all been worth it. So one thing that makes baseball so unique is that everyone goes through some sort of minor league experience. Um, you know, you, you look at other sports and that's not necessarily the case. The best of the best can go straight to the top. And that's not the case in our sport. So I always ask p- people this question, what is like, an experience or a story from your minor league days that you'll remember forever? Um, I mean, e- each level is different, you know, um, just because, you know, like more recently back in AAA, like you take 4 a.m., 6 a.m. flights, um, and then you play later that day. Um, it's 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 very it's very tough because you, you get in at like one o'clock and you just go to the hotel drop your bags off go to the field and play um like a ball double a double s we, we we were taking like 15 hour bus rides before <laughs> before game we, yeah we we play a night game and then just drive through the night get there at like noon the next day and then just go to the field and play um I don't know. There, there's so many different things and they, they've all been, I mean, obviously like you don't want to be taking that 16 hour bus ride before a, a game. I don't want to do that again, but <laughs> you know, it was definitely fun at the time. We, we would bring like consoles on the, on the bus and play, you know, s- spend a lot of time playing cards and just having fun. And I, th- I think those, those are the most important things for us. Yeah. They're definitely not, building f- they're not like fun experiences, but they're experiences that you're glad you have later. Like I remember when I was in low A at the time, I was playing in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And the furthest team we had to play was in Bowling Green, uh, Kentucky, the Rays organization. And we were playing there in the last game. Getaway day was a night game. And we were talking like, why, why is this? The, we have a 12 hour ride back. Why are you doing this? And they're like, oh, we have to have a certain amount of night games. This one just has to be the case. And obviously it goes into extra innings because that's just how it works. So it goes into extra innings. We don't get on the road until 12 midnight and we get, we pull back into Grand Rapids at like 11 a.m. the next day and had a day game and just had to strap it back on and get ready to go. And I feel like that in a nutshell is minor league baseball. Yeah, um, I, think, I think we've had to push back and like delay a game like an hour because the team hasn't shown up yet. <laughs> Um, so then you, you make it to the big leagues in 2018 
and it's a little bit of a struggle for you at first. And and I kind of baseball is so tough mentally. Like I feel like harder than 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 anything because you're you're failing 70% of the time and you're considered great. So mentally, and for me, that was the biggest difference in in every level I played at was the mental aspect of it and the mental grind and you really have to learn how to struggle and it's not easy when when you got when you got up how much of it was you know mentally like a struggle and a battle for you and how much of it was like physical and the swing and and the pitching you were seeing um i think at each level whether you're going to like low a to high a high a double a you know triple a or double a to the big leagues i think each level has some sort of adjustment that you need to make um, just because, you know, there's better players there and, you know, they're expecting a little bit more out of you and, and whatnot. Um, but I think at the major, major league level, you know, it's, it's all about winning games and whether you go over three, but you're, you know, moving runners over, you go stack, stack five over, you know, that, that's being productive. And, you know, in the minor leagues, it's more of um you know, developing and just getting better as, as a player so you can help the major league team at some point. Um, so I think, I mean, they, obviously, you know, the, in the big leagues, the, these are the best players in the world. Yeah. And, you know, they're so good defensively at the plate, pitching-wise. I mean, well, the ball's moving all over all, all over the place when guys are throwing the ball when you're in the box. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's extremely tough, like you're saying. We failed – 70% of the time and that you're one of the best in the league. Um, so obviously you never plan on struggling and you never want to struggle, but you know, we play so many games that it's going to happen at some point, whether it's for a month or a week or however long you just got to mentally just grind it out, get through it and find out what works for you to get out of it. Dude, you talked about it and nobody says this in the minor leagues and in the organization, but and this was this was tough for me. It's it's not about the team in the minor leagues. No matter how much they say we want you guys to win, win as a team, it's so individualized in the minor leagues and about your success. And then, yeah, I guess like you said, when when you get to the big leagues, it becomes about the team and and winning as a team. So you you get through your rookie year and then have a great year and, and have continued to play well in the big leagues. Was there something going into that off season that you really focused on with your swing or, or switching things up or, or did you just grind through it mentally and, and get to that next year and then took off as the player you knew you could be? Um, you know, I, I, I know what I can play, what level I can play at and you know, how well I can do it. Um, you know, he, he, even this year, you know, my first month wasn't statistically like the greatest. Um, but like I, I was still hitting the ball well, um, but I wasn't, you know, necessarily getting the results. But um, like that, you just got to grind through that. Just forget about like you're just you're hitting and that people are getting out and whatever you like. I, I, I know what I can what I can do out on the field. And I know a lot of guys in this league know that, and, you know, they go out there with that that attitude that you know they're the best in the league because you know when you're th when you're thinking that you know you're going to be playing at your best and you just got to grind through the the lows and you know try and get back to where you where you know you can play and or yeah. where you you're normally at so you know I'm uh, I'm feeling good right now uh, we're playing pretty well so I'm just going to try and keep it up this is the most important question I have for you all day how do you hit without batting gloves i i cannot fathom it um i don't know like a lot of guys ask me that i'm like <laughs> um it, it's really not like like i was telling my, i've been telling mike i was like mike can you play today without batting gloves he goes no <laughs> um so like guys guys think it's like ridiculous how we don't it like, is I ridiculous. It is, I guess yeah. you've like built it up because do you I, do you use pine tar or anything? Um, I don't use like pine tar or like the sticky stuff because I don't like my hands getting like super sticky. Um, I I just put some rosin on. I use like the it's like the flex tape stuff that guys like typically like tape their wrists and, yeah. and 
feet or, or like ankles with. Um, I just put that on my bat, so it's kind of like like a grip, um, but it's like padded grip. Um, and I just put some rosin on for you know dry out my hands and stuff. So I'm like I, I feel fine with it. It's normal. It doesn't hurt at all. Um, I don't know. I got guys think that it's like ridiculously hard. Um, I don't know. It's just how I hit. I mean, you always hear stories of, of Moises Alou back in the day who did it, and he was like the one growing up that I would hear, like, yeah, he, he hit with no batting gloves, but he would also get all these calluses, and he would, like, pee on his hands. Is that is? Are you a big, I'm going to pee on my hands sort of guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't really get uh, blisters or calluses, really. Um, like, I might, I might get some, like, before spring training, like, when I first, like, start hitting again. Ramping it back up. Um, coming back from off season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, like, um, my hands are fine. Um, I don't, I don't understand like when guys don't like put any tape on. They just put a bunch of pine tar on the bat and swing without batting gloves. Then, like, oh. my hands would be Raw. destroyed if I did just, that. Yeah, I have to put, like that little, I have to, yeah, I have to put a little wrap on it. Like, I don't know how guys do that. That's that's crazy to me. But um, yeah, I'm all good. Did you did you bulk up a little bit coming into this season? Uh, yeah, um, I came into spring training about, about roughly 220 or so. Um, I know like my baseball card and like on the, I don't know, the internet says I'm still like 199 it or something. It really but undersells you. So I, I was yeah. watching a game uh, earlier this year. Well, I, I watched a lot and then was in Anaheim when y'all were out here. And I was like, wait, mm -hmm. 190, 195 just doesn't seem right. So I don't know if you like made a conscious effort this off season to bulk up or if that's just plain wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I try and do that every, every off season gets a, like set a goal before, uh, before the off season starts, like at the, at the end of this year, like I set another goal and try and do it by the time spring training rolls around. Um, but yeah, they have me like 20 pounds less than I actually am. <laughs> um, I, don't, I think they just throw up like a rough estimate. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm probably like 215 or so right now. I lost like a little bit of weight just from playing, you know, every day. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I just set a goal every offseason to try and reach it by spring training and go from there. What was it like in – now this is, this is a tough memory for me as well. In, in 2019 – you got to play in a World Series, which is awesome. But, you know, that series in itself was one of the most incredible World Series, World Series, World Series ever. It was incredible. What was it like for you getting to play in a World Series on the biggest stage in the world? Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a, you know, different atmosphere just from, just from being on the field. Um, I mean... Typically, like we have like sold out crowds, like and like they'll cheer and like communications and whatever's going on throughout the game. But you know, in the World Series, it's constantly just like at the maximum volume, and everyone's got towels, just like waving them around. It, it, it's pretty crazy because it's nonstop, just from the start to the finish. Um, and it's for the we had it for the full seven games. Yeah. So it's definitely like playing in those games is definitely like life changing. Like. You definitely appreciate it, and it, it, it's a lot of fun to be out there. Did you know that it's the only championship series in history that the home team didn't win a single game? I know. I saw that. That was pretty crazy. That's insane. Yeah, it, it was weird. Yeah. Um, you know, we they, they won the first two, then we won the next three, and then they got it. Um, but, yeah, I was, like, saying that, like, halfway through, and I was like, this is weird. Like, the home team hasn't won it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it worked out like like that, but you know. It, what was what was, was the a, morale was... in the locker room leaving leaving Washington, leaving D.C.? Because I, I mean, obviously, I, I know it's high, um, but you know, I was also there and and traveling with you guys every every step of the way. So leaving D.C. for me, especially with my brother on the mound for, and, and, you know, Garrett potentially on the mound at some point in the series, my thought was, you know, you never want to count your chickens before they hatch, but, but I was feeling good. Um, and in, in the clubhouse for you guys, is it sort of like a, is it like a, 
now we're going home and we have to do it? Or were you guys like, all right, we feel, we feel good about, about this. Um, no, we were, we were confident in our, in ourselves. I mean, even when we, you know, went down the first two games, um, we, we were never out of it. You know, if you look at our pit, our pitching staff we had and our, our lineup, I mean, you know, that we had some phenomenal players, um, playing and, you know, you're never going we were down three games. We could, we could still come back and win, win the next four. I mean, our, our, the team was so talented and special and, you know, we, we were excited to get back and play in front of our home fans and potentially win it. But, you know, we, we, we were, we were ready to play. So you're what, what were you the 22 at that time uh, playing in the world series? Yeah. You're, you're 22 years old playing in a world series on a team with guys that are, you know, it's a young core, but also some vets and like who on the team, especially in that, that's your first, you know, full season. Who, who would you like lean on and, and talk to a lot? And, you know, who kind of did you lean on throughout the course of that year? Um, I mean, I, I was around like the outfielders, you know, most of the time, um, you know, like in early work and BP and in the locker room, they would kind of section us like in our positions kind of. So, I mean, I would, I would be around George and Red and Mike and just, I mean, for us, it was like a, you know, we would treat it as like a regular game. Um, yeah. You don't have to put any more pressure or put any more whatever into it. You just got to go out there and play your game. And, you know, I'd, I'd look up to those guys and, you know, they've been playing, playing this game for a long time and they've been playing at a, at a high level. So I just looked up to those guys, watch them go about their business and try and, you know, just learn, learn things that'll help me as I, as I grow up. Speaking of guys in the outfield, and and when when I when you say Houston Astros, you don't necessarily think this player, but talk to me about how incredible Jordan Alvarez is. I remember he comes on the scene, and is just like, how is this guy doing this? I remember talking to my brother when he first came up, and he's like, one of the first games, he like sits back on a three-one changeup and lasers it the other way, and he's like, who is this guy? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, the first, I think the first time I played with Jordan was, was in AAA and, you know, I got to see him play every day from then on. Um, but he's just one of those guys that just rakes up, up at the plate. I mean, you, I, I feel like as a pitcher, you would never want to, like, face him. Um, I mean, I was looking at his career numbers the other day. He was, I mean, he's hitting, like, 315 roughly, like, as a career, which is, you know, obviously, like, best, best <laughs> in the game. Um, I saw like he was the fastest. I don't know if ML in MLB or just the Astros, like 100 RBIs. It's in history. Um, I th- yeah, I, I think yeah, you're right. Yeah, and I was like, this guy's just like breaking <laughs> records for the franchise and for the MLB, just just doing what he does. And you know, he he's a great guy to be around in the clubhouse, and he's he's such a good hitter. And you know, we're we're excited to watch him. You know, every at bat. So I want to ask you, I, I ask everybody these same three questions, sort of like career moment type questions. So the first one would be, what was your welcome to the MLB sort of moment? Um, it was probably my first game. I got up there and, um, you know, it's my first fight appearance and the whole crowd, like, it's like a standing ovation, like everyone's standing up cheering. And I'm like, this is like, you don't get that in the minor <laughs> leagues. Um, like they just cheer when you come up to the plate, but you know, in the big leagues, it's they introduce you as you're going up to the plate and the whole crowd just gets like, like how it was for the playoffs. You know, it's that loud. And you're like, what the heck? <laughs> um, so yeah, it was definitely weird, but it was definitely like a, a wow, this is like the, this is the big leagues now. What was your, what has been your most memorable play on the field? Um, Most memorable play. Um, I don't know. I, I, Hitting or I, know. I feel, feeling, I feel I like for, I feel like for me, um, it it'd be a defensive play like this year, like making a diving play to you know prevent a run being scored, just yeah. because it's like it's satisfying for me knowing that I you know help a pitcher out, like saving saving a run or saving some pitches. Like now I can go out for another inning, like. 
because when when you go back in the dugout and he's like, hey, like thank you, like it's it's gratifying for me to see that. You know, I try and help him out as much as possible. And what's a moment that stands out to you that has taken place off the field with teammates? Um, probably one like one of our team dinners. Um, some of the guys got together, like met at a team dinner they paid for, and you know it was just like a fun like um, group thing because we haven't really been able to do that recently. And, um, it was fun to, you know, get back together as a team and, you know, do something off the field because, you know, last year or so we haven't really been able to do that. So, you know, like a, like a team dinner that we could all yeah. do, have some fun, eat some food and drink or whatever. So Kyle, you, you know, th there's a lot going on in baseball right now and, and the game, the game itself is changing. The, the game of baseball is changing and how it's portrayed and all of that. And especially, you know, uh, r recently, the unwritten rules of baseball ha have come up a lot. There's a lot of talk about what's right, what's wrong, new school versus old school. So if you were, co if you were commissioner for a day, what is one, one thing you would change or implement to, to make the game of baseball more exciting? Hmm. that's interesting um i think we're like we're trying to do a bunch of stuff now like you know with, you know that's extra inning runner and um chant, like modifying the balls a little bit that's it's kind of tough um do you like, like you don't want to make the bag like the bags any closer because you know there's a bunch of close plays right i think honestly i think like changing changing the baseballs would like make it the biggest difference in the game just because change it like back to what it was because it it clearly they they said they changed it this year and it has clearly made a big difference and and i mean i i think all these no hitters that plays a huge factor i think a lot of strikeouts so would you like to see you know a, a change back i mean i think we have a little bit of a problem here with the baseball yeah um i know there's there's a bunch of like controversial stuff, whether you should make the baseballs better or worse or whatever. Um, but I mean, it's not like you can tell like the pitchers to throw the ball like not as hard. Um, you can't make the bases closer, like the field closer or further. Um, so I think like, you know, the baseball, whether you should make it smaller, like laces higher or something, I think that would. You know, obviously changing yeah. as you've seen uh you know this year and in recent years so i think honestly i think that's the, the biggest part that changes it probably the most all right before i let you go you uh, you stream on twitch not not often in season not any in season but we you know we've played cod together and with jake marisnik and and that group of guys the question i have for you is you know, you stream and, and you play it so often. How are you not any better at Call of Duty than you are? <laughs> oh, man. I've actually been trying to, like, re-download. The, uh, so I have, like, my PC. I just keep it at home because I don't want to take it with me on, on during the season. Um, but I have my PlayStation. I was trying to, like, re-download it so I could play with some of the guys. But it, like, wasn't downloading. I was like, whatever. But I don't, like, yeah, I don't play it as much. Like, I don't bring bring you know video games on the road with me um just because like i want to you know sleep and be well rested for the next day rather than playing playing to the wee hours of the morning getting pissed off three four in the morning yeah yeah who's better you or marisnik oh me no they, they <laughs> nothing on it. uh all right kyle well, we'll have to we'll have to play again soon thanks so much man for joining me i really appreciate it and good luck the rest of the way yeah for sure thanks for having me Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3-0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213-537-9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest, and we have a lot of fun, so hit that subscribe button.